card. Um, yeah. Yeah.
you have got to develop a comprehensive solution to the traffic congestion problem here that can't be ignored. We have a mile of traffic uh, twice, three times a day going out a mile in four directions uh, from the community, which, by, by the way, as I mentioned the last time I was here, that's what caused the collapse of the business district in the 60s. <clears throat> that's what caused the great reduction in the tax revenue production <coughs> community, and that's also what resulted in the taxes on the individual, fa excuse me, individual families and the individual and the people in the community being raised as high as they are right there. I think I gave this, I'm not sure if I gave this to you once before, but this is the, these are the solutions <coughs> The Bridgeville's traffic problem could have been done in 2005, 08, 08, 18, 1992, 1988, and 1969. They're all the same. And I think because, I'd like, and incidentally, the comments, uh, I, I've taken quotations directly from each of those seven studies. The pages are listed there. If you want me to get the originals for it, I'll be glad to. But we have a great potential to become a very wealthy community and greatly reduce the taxes. But the flood, uh, the, the solution that you choose for the uh, for solving the flood problem is uh, essential. One other thing I might mention: last Wednesday, I went to. Uh, uh, the University of Pittsburgh's uh, presentation of their solution to the Bridget flood problem. And it was more impressive than that major presentation that PennDOT made at the fire department about a, a year ago about some of the improvements they wanted to make along this corridor. It was rather spectacular. There, the students' uh, solution to the Bridget flooding problem is very similar to <coughs> The uh, solution that was given to us in 1980 by the Pennsylvania <coughs> Department of Envir Environmental Sources, and which is very similar <coughs> uh, to this proposal. Uh, again, I, I, I understand that a retention pond is always a logical consideration for any uh, communities having a flood problem. But, but uh, the uh, retention pond, by the way, this is the, this is the proposal that you're considering. I know you can change it and modify it. Uh, I hope you aren't fixed on this. But this is the proposal where the entire Baldwin Street area is made a uh, potential flood retention pond, and the, 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 uh, the buildings on the, uh, on the uh, South side of Baldwin Street, they would be placed on 12 foot high uh, pedestals. Uh, the retention pond, excuse me, to protect Bridgeville, don't give up a business district that can be redeveloped and be made twice as successful as our central business district. The retention pond should be built 800 yards north of Bridgeville on McLaughlin One Road. There's a 20 acre spot there that is now presently grass and trees. And I know, I understand uh, a real estate developer has purchased it. He wants $3 million for it. I don't know if he's aware of the fact that <clears throat> I've been told that there's a horizontal line shaft going under the land, but uh, I, you can't, you've got to force the state and the county and the federal government to make that the uh, area that protects uh, the people in Bridgeville from the massive uh, flood problems uh, we're going to have. Incidentally, uh, Bob, is that area in St. Clair? Yes, it is okay. in St. Clair. Just wanted to make sure we were talking about the same property. Yeah, uh, you, uh, Joe, you know where the... <coughs> I, I, know, I know where you're talking you know about. It is. Yep. It's across the middle. Just making right. sure it was St. Clair. Yes, absolutely. And, but that doesn't mean that you can't obviously approach them. But I, I think the, uh, the advantage of the proposal uh, proposal I'm making about making the flood solution problem, or the flood solution for Bridgeville include the solution to the traffic congestion is right here you have 
uh, McLaughlin Run, Cook School Road, and Byer Hill Road, all coming to that point. You can, if you do this correct, correctly, the way I've outlined it here, you can reduce the traffic congestion and turn uh, Baldwin Street into potentially a great uh, uh, potential central business district. I want to mention one, one other thing too. And this is, this again goes back to uh, what I think is an oversight or an error that was made by bridge officials starting 50 years ago. Uh, this is I know this drawing isn't large enough, but I think you'll be able to identify what I'm saying. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is Route 19 through Upper St. Clair, Mount Lebanon. <clears throat> this is Washington Pike through Collier, Bridgeville, and South Fayette. Do you see all these heavy black, well here, let me describe this chronologically. In the late 60s, I-79 was built parallel so Washington Pike and Bridgeville. Within months after that occurred, in other words, after when I-79 was took to the Parkway West, there's a new ride into Pittsburgh, people beginning from the Boy Road Interchange on 19, all the way into the Liberty Tunnels, were able to avoid 52 traffic lights. In a matter of 90 days, the 40,000 people, consumer motorists, that made the Upper St. Clair and Mount Lebanon business districts, what with, with they were and, and, and are, uh, practically collapsed. This, when, shortly after that occurred, the Grace uh, of the uh, Southfield Village Mall was, has been sold three times by them. My point is, when during that period of time, say 10 to 15 years after, all of those consumer motors <coughs> going through Safia Bridge and Collier. You see all these heavy black lines? These were all the four lane wide roads that PennDOT built leading to these three, these four red squares there. That's the mall, <coughs> the uh, shopping center next to it, and these, these are the village uh, for the Mount Lebanon shops. Uh, there was no traffic congestion problem there, but what they did the building of those roads, which had to be uh, $100 million or more, not to mention the mass transit line that cost $300,000, that was built to the south entrance of the South Hills Village Mall. Uh, the access to that area was much greater than Bridgeville's, uh, obviously. But when the traffic congestion started occurring in Bridgeville because of our, the, I guess, the first shopping center in Allegheny County, uh, which is Great Southern, uh, the PennDOT and the uh, original officials made no attempt to get PennDOT to solve, to imp implement any of these problems. The recommendation from Buckman and Associates started in 1969, and every year they proposed the same thing, to, to extend Shady Avenue 220 yards, make a two one-way couple, three-lane roads, and what the reason that this, excuse me, <coughs> The reason that this is so important, doing it this way, is by getting, uh, by creating this uh, a juncture and doubling the traffic flow here, it's very easy to complete the two-way couple, at least from the Bar Road intersection toward I-79 and back. It's the, the, the income to the community would be enormous. And I'm, I'm working my, I want to mention one other thing to you. Uh, uh, the average income to the families in Bridgeville of $55,000 a year. <clears throat> the communities surrounding us are uh, a little above or a little below $100,000. But the people in Bridger are paying 50% more of their $55,000 incomes than the communities around us. That if we had a, a highly tax revenue producing business district, that wouldn't be the case. Also, the uh, also, uh, if you if you divide the, the the budgets of all four of the communities that we're talking about by the number of people in it, uh, the people in uh, Upper St. Clair, each person gets twenty three hundred dollars spent on them. The other communities around us is seventeen hundred. Result is thousand. You've got to understand that the traffic congestion problem has to be solved in order to solve the financial problems. Thank you, Bob. Thank you.
citizen and as a member of council and said clean up the creek remove the debris from the creek get the debris out of the creek Lori, Joe, Mike send public works down into the creek and get rid of the debris, the debris before he passed away Mr. Calusi worked with Joe Seitz, our engineer to come up with a plan for what it was called, a trash rack job? Yes. Yeah. For a trash rack. Now, I must admit that I was skeptical. Personally, I looked at it and said, I don't know that the debris is the only thing or the major thing causing the flooding in our community. On Wednesday, I also had the pleasure of going to the University of Pittsburgh to watch a group of students. Um, we are very lucky. Uh, Dr. John Euler, who I only thought of as a historian, because those are the articles that I have read. Dr. Euler is a civil engineer, is an engineer, and with the University of Pittsburgh, and we are so lucky because two groups of students did did their senior project for the Borough of Bridgewater. One was on the McLaughlin flood. Uh, it will be available at some point. Um, I would encourage you to listen to the 45-minute presentation. Uh, the individuals compared the June 20th flooding to a September rainfall. The end conclusion, and I leave it to you to, to, to take your own conclusions away from their presentation, what I left with was Bill Colusi was right. They pointed out that the debris, that the, that the, uh, that the, uh, the creek and its orifices, the bridges, appeared to be capable of handling the floodwaters. Now, whether those calculations are accurate, their students, leave it to, uh, to, to others to double check. But if they're right, cleaning the debris out of the creek in Bridgeville and blocking debris from coming into our community from upstream would appear to be a vital part of the solution and a very low cost part of the solution. So I would ask our manager and our engineer to please take a look at the project that was approved by council several years ago and that if there is something blocking it externally, to make a point of, of reporting on that. So we, that. we actually met with the DEP regarding yes, we did. the trash rack and mm -hmm. the making application for yeah. we, have to, we have to obtain uh, a, a, joint permit. a joint permit from the Conservation District and mm -hmm. the DEP, and we're right. moving forward with that. And are you getting any kind of, because I, I believe no. that there's a lot of external support. They, they had no problem. Excellent. Excellent. That is, that is really good. <coughs> so, See, Marie's way ahead of you. Yes. On the ball. Yes, I wish she was ahead of Councilman Pelosi. <laughs> <laughs> <You know? laughs> because he was the one, and it, 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 is really, it is really nice to remember him and, and his contribution. Thank you, Pat. Mm -hmm. All right. <clears throat> uh, minutes. Uh, motion to borough council regarding the minutes of November 12, 2018, regular meeting as submitted. Bruce. I'll second. And Bill Henderson. All those 
favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries. A motion for the council regarding the minutes of November 20, 2018 budget workshop meeting as submitted. So moved. All second. Bruce and Billigan. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, ordinance number 1005, a motion of the Borough Council regarding ordinance number 1005, an ordinance amending, amending ordinance number 998 pertaining to general rates charged for sewage service within the Borough of Bridgeville with the Allegheny County Sanitary Authority. Increase of an additional 52 cents per 1,000 gallons of water usage and $1.10 <coughs> per quarterly bill increase for service charge. The borough proposes no increase in 2019. Alpha Sands rate in 2018 was $7.42 per 1,000 gallons. The borough's rate was $6.23 per 1,000 gallons for a total of $13.65 per 1,000 gallons. And the Alpha Sands <laughs> service charge was $15.60 per quarter. The 2019 rates, Alpha Sands rates will go to $7.00. And 94 cents per 1,000 gallons. The Bridgeville Borough rate will stay at six dollars and 23 cents per 1,000 gallons, with a total of 14 dollars and 17 cents per 1,000 gallons. And the Alpha Sand service charge will go to 16 dollars and 69 cents per quarter. A public hearing was held uh, earlier tonight on December 10th uh, to receive public comment. The ordinance has been duly advertised. <laughs> And BJ, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, ordinance number 1006, the motion of the borough council regarding, regarding ordinance number 1006, an ordinance fixing the tax rate and levying borough taxes for the fiscal year 2019 and reenacting all other revenue acts. Uh, no increase in borough real estate tax taxes are proposed for the budget year of 2019. The ordinance has been duly advertised. So moved. Uh, Bruce? Second. Second. And good. Joe. Give that to Joe. Uh, Joe Klosno, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, um, we need to... Okay, we'll come back. We're going to skip uh, resolution number 2018-12 and come back at the end. Um, resolution number 2018-13, uh, motion to the borough council uh, regarding resolution number 2018-13, resolution approving the request of Ragtop LLC for transfer of liquor license number R-11050 from Whitaker. Whitaker Borough into the Borough of Bridgeville at 820 McLaughlin Run Road. A uh, public hearing was held uh, December 10, 2018 to receive public comment. So moved. Uh, Second. Joe Glossman and Nina Petricelli, all those in favor? Aye. Uh, uh, all those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, resolution number 2018-14, a motion to the Borough Council regarding resolution number 2018-14, resolution establishing a fee of $53 per quarter for the weekly collection, hauling, and disposable, disposal of solid waste and recycle, recyclables within the borough of Bridgeville. So, uh, Bruce Gallarducci? Second. And Joe Plusmo, all those in favor? Aye. Uh, uh, all those opposed? Motion carries. Um, motion, I'm sorry, resolution number 2018-15, a motion to the Borough Council regarding resolution number 2018-15, a resolution authorizing the Council President to enter into agreement with PennDOT for manhole work on State Route 3034, Chartier Street. Uh, the Borough of Bridgeville will supply the material and PennDOT will incorporate the work into their contract. The agreement has been uh, provided upon receipt of the letter and resolution and will be a non-reimbursement type agreement. I move. Second. You have a comment, PJ? I'm just curious, I don't know where. Is that a part of the Joe bigger project? Or? I think that's a separate project. It's the million we're servicing at Chartier's Creek from probably right around Rite Aid all the way up to uh, the intersection, the main intersection. Is there any other cost? 
I don't. I think it said not to exceed twenty five thousand is what well, the agreement said. As far as the cost for us, it's just, it's just going to be for what we own. Okay. As yeah. far as supplying the materials for the manholes or any risers or anything like that, they're going to do the work, and it's a uh, non. You know, the agreement is saying you you give us the, the material, we'll do the work, yeah. and, and that's it. No money. All right. Did they find any like I know they're doing core drilling samples. Did they ever find anything out? I, mean, I know they were looking at the guardrails, or are they We never that received any of that information. We can check. All right. Okay. All right. Here's a, there's a motion and a second. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? <coughs> motion carries. Uh, current estimate number two, Baldwin Street backflow preventer contract. The motion of the board council regarding the remittal of current estimate number two. Baldwin Street Black backflow preventer contract to uh, Osiris <coughs> Enterprise in the amount of forty thousand one hundred and fifty dollars and four cents for work completed to date. This has been reviewed and approved by the sites. I'm a Who is that? Joe Lucci and Bruce Gallagher. <coughs> all those in favor? Aye. Uh, all those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, current estimate number two and final 2018 <coughs> pavement maintenance program contract A. Uh, motion to borough council regarding the middle of current estimate number two and final 2018 pavement maintenance and pro maintenance program con contract <coughs> A. Young Blood Paving Incorporated in the amount of $43,737.79 for work completed. Estimate has been reviewed and approved by engineer sites. So, Nino and Bruce, <coughs> all those in favor? Aye. Uh, all those opposed? Motion for Okay. Uh, labor agreement. <coughs> Full-time public, work public works employees in the borough of, at the, and the borough of Bridgeville. Uh, motion of the borough council regarding the labor agreement between the full-time <coughs> Bridgeville Borough Public Works employees and the borough of Bridgeville for the calendar years 2019, 2020, and 2020, 2021. The agreement includes the following three-year contract wage increase 2.5, 2.5, and 2.5 percent. So moved. Second. Uh, Bill Henderson and Nino, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, employee handbook, uh, motion to borough council regarding the updated borough, Bridgeville Borough employee <coughs> handbook as revised. Um, we're going to, I'd like to make a request to table this. We just received it and we're getting it. Yes. Okay. Uh, motion made by Nino, who's a second? Yeah. Okay, BJ. All those in favor of tabling it? <coughs> All those opposed? <coughs> All right. Uh, calendar year 2019 meeting dates average. <coughs> uh, motion of the borough council approving the following meeting dates for the calendar year 2019 and advertising the same. <coughs> council meetings will be held the second Monday of each month. <coughs> agenda, agenda meeting at 6.30 p.m. and the regular meeting at 7 p.m. <coughs> The budget workshop meetings will be held on November 19th, 2019 at 6 p.m. Uh, the Bridgeville Parking Authority meetings will be held the third Monday of each month at 7.30 p.m. The Planning Commission meetings are scheduled for the last Monday of each month at 7 p.m. during the months of January through April and June through October. The May meeting will be held on May 20th, 2019. The November and December meetings will will be combined and held on December 2nd, 2019. <coughs> Zoning hearings will be scheduled as <coughs> So uh, Bruce? Second. And Nina, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion <coughs> carries. Exoneration of 2015 delinquent real estate taxes. A motion of the borough council regarding the exoneration of borough real estate tax collector Anne Marie Parisi for the calendar year 2015 uncollected real estate taxes. Uh, the 2015 real estate tax total is $10,699.70. I have a question. Yes. Out of that, <coughs> those monies, we hand that over to Jordan Tax Service, yes. right? 
So if there's a house that's sold and we collect some of that money, we say it's a thousand dollars. Out of that thousand dollars, how much do we know? Do we what? Would we get out of that thousand? Because I know we don't get the full amount. Correct. Yes, we get we get the amount plus interest plus costs. <laughs> Okay. And uh, Jordan um, then charges us 10% <coughs> for collection, but the interest and the costs um, exceed the what we pay Jordan tax. So that 10% would be taken out of our cut. Then, then the collection ordinance is passed along all those collection costs to the <coughs> in addition to Jordan, including Jordan's costs as far as they usually operate. Their costs get passed along to the debtor. The costs. Yes, we receive, I said it, we receive the lienable real estate penalties, interest, and costs, which are Jordan's costs. Yes. And then um, we pay Jordan those costs. So we receive those. Okay. So we're made whole if we could. Well, that was my. I'm sorry. Okay. No, 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 that's fine. Just curious on if we if and when we do collect that mm -hmm. would we actually get the full amount mm -hmm. or we would get cash or something like that okay thank you is there uh, I'll, I'll make, I'll make uh, joe and bruce all those in favor <coughs> uh, uh -huh. all those opposed motion carries bill list uh, motion to borrow cost regarding the uh december 2018 bill list i'll move uh, joe second and joe joe and joe all those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, payrolls. Motion of the borough council approve the payrolls of December 12, sorry, December 14, 21, 28, 2018, and January 4 and 11, 2019. So moved. Uh, Bruce? Second. And BJ. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Uh, monthly reports. A motion to accept and pay any commissions due to the 2018 real estate tax collector. I'll move. Uh, Joe? Sedici? Seven. Nina? All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Motion to accept the October 2018 financial report. I'll move. Joe Gucci? Yes, sir. And Bruce? All those in favor? Aye. <coughs> motion carries. All those opposed? Motion carries. Sorry. Motion to accept the November 2018 police report. So moved. Uh, Bill Henderson. So And Bruce Gallarucci. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, all those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, real estate tax refund. A motion of the Borough of Council regarding the following real estate tax refund due to a change in the assessment as requested by the real estate tax collector. Uh, the year 2018, block blocks 255-H-279 in the amount of $254.70 uh, to SJ Group. Uh, copy of the official change order has been attached to the request. So uh, Bruce, Dr. Second. And Nina. All those in favor? Uh, all those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, you want to go through the data reports? Before we do the other request, yeah, yeah. other administration request. Okay. okay. Yeah. 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 Session. All right. We will be back shortly. Thank you. <coughs> uh, the motion for uh, the budget. Uh, Joe has a presentation. Uh, the finance committee met several times, and then we uh, had the uh, workshop. It's at the middle of November. Middle of November, and we came up with uh, some different slides that we wanted to address uh, on uh, decisions, as well as what we did in 2018. We made our decisions for 2019. Uh, so we just have these few slides that we uh, wanted to go over. Uh, as everybody knows, the duties of the borough or the administration, financial services, police and fire department, um, and, and so on with the, all of the different public works and engineering and code enforcement and uh, maintenance by public works and supporting the library, supporting the fire department and the police, and um, the recycling and waste collection. Um, 
As far as the 2018 accomplishments, uh, we negotiated the police and public works collective bargaining agreements. Uh, we continue to work on the sani sanitary sewer repairs, lining, and CP beam. Uh, the lines, uh, task two and three of the Baldwin Street Corridor project were funded, and uh, 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 that report is coming to us in the near future. Uh, the uh, MS4 stormwater compliance is ongoing. Uh, that's a large ordeal and continues to uh, us to keep working on. Uh, we did some pavement uh, maintenance projects. Uh, we did uh, one of the things in 2018 that we had was we wanted to do some restoration on the exterior of this building in addition to the interior. Uh, mo as before I even should have said, most of this work was either done or was in the process of being done um, before the flood. Uh, obviously, uh, as soon as the flood happened, Lori pretty much stopped uh, writing checks and and uh, all of the different things that we were had budgeted that weren't necessary, we uh, postponed. The interior was one of those. Uh, the new police car was purchased. The uh, backflow preventers of the phase one were completed and we did approve the volunteer firefighter tax credit program. So those are some of the accomplishments we had. Um, as well as we have the PennDOT Greenlight uh, Go program that's uh, being implemented, Lori, is that targeted for this year? Um, we actually, um, these are the contracts with the notice to proceed that I signed today. Great. So, so, so we're really close to that, so hopefully that will help some of the um, different things that go on on Route 50. Uh, and then obviously the timeline has been set for the Chartier Street and Bridge expansion. Uh, timeline uh, set for 2020. Uh, as far as public safety, the police, uh, Bridgeville Police uh, Chief uh, supplied me some information of 4,100 calls through October, uh, as well as uh, keeping involved in the community either through social media or a very positive influence with uh, a lot of our uh, citizens of the borough. Uh, the fire department had 125 hours approximately in training for their members and reported, I responded to approximately 500 calls. Now, obviously this uh, number was a little bit inflated due to the flood, but um, that's a, 500 calls is uh, an awful lot uh, for, for one year. Uh, as far as uh, the biggest call was the 2018 destructive flooding. Uh, everybody's seen a lot of these different pictures, but uh, the, the biggest, uh, take on this is the flood expenses and the mitigation were $397, yeah, $397,036 um, so far as far as the uh, expenses that we had to, to use to recover from that June flood. Um, and to add to that, these are some of the large expenses that we had in 2018. These are the main expenses, the larger ones. Uh, which is almost $1.8 million. <clears throat> um, for what are the plans for 2019? When we met for, uh, for the Finance Committee, we, we said, all right, what are some of the things that we can spend money on, but knowing that we need to keep expenses very, very low because our reserves are almost to a minimal. Uh, hazard mitigation design and projects. Uh, Lori and Joe Seitz have been working very digitally. Uh, one of the examples what uh, Pat was talking about, uh, Lori and Joe have been working ever since July on that, that aspect. Uh, the stormwater management is going to be an ongoing program for, for many years. Uh, the McLaughlin Run Park restroom upgrades as well as those ever popular much needed Chartier's Park restroom upgrades. Um, and um, note on the part of Chartier's Park, or you got a nice size grant for a large portion of that. Yes. So forty thousand. Yeah. So that was that's almost a minimal cost to us, if I remember correctly. Uh, Washington Avenue and Chartier Street design; those expenses uh, continue and, and are ready for the 2020 construction. Uh, the sanitary sewer lining uh, and repairs are continuing. The phase two of the black foam preventer. <coughs> Uh, continues obviously our pavement maintenance program as mentioned the adaptive light of project installation and a modest approach to spending to rebuild the reserves is the key um, this year so that's one thing when 
somebody approaches Lori to spend some money, we have to sit back and say, is this something that, that we really have to have in 2019? Okay, um, so out of that, what are our largest expenses that we're anticipating? Uh, our portion of the adaptive street lighting is the 53 grand, the MS4 stormwater compliance, uh, the McLaughlin grant project, we have that money set aside, correct, Lori? Yes. Um, the, pro the expansion for the, the Chartier Street and the widening, uh, the sewer lining and backflow preventers, and then obviously the pavement maintenance programs. Again, those are just the large expenses in addition to the benefits of the employees and, and, and salaries and all those things. But these ones are 1.4 million. Uh, as far as just a, a history that we have over the last few years, um, I'm not going to dwell on this much that uh, right now our revenues are only 90% of the 2018 budget. Um, in talking at the Finance Committee, uh, a lot of times we receive a little bump in regards to the taxes at the end of the year uh, because some people uh, pay uh, their taxes to, uh, right before, sometime in December, that last quarter of those taxes. Uh, but uh, as you can see in November, uh, we did, uh, or as you can see with our budget, it's 12% uh, higher um, from 17. Well, that's unfortunately we had to raise taxes last year. And boy, I don't know where we would be if we didn't raise taxes last year uh, with this uh, unexpected flood that we have. As far as the expenditures, um, as you can see, we uh, have uh, definitely decreased. As soon as we had those expenditures, we decreased uh, our spendings and we're anticipating being about 7% lower uh, in 2017 and that's even with those mitigation uh, with the flood on there as well. So kudos to Lori and making sure to tighten her belt and uh, the borough's belt, excuse me, not your belt. Um, and uh, making sure we have uh, uh, controlled expenses. Uh, probably the biggest thing um, that you have to watch for to be uh, very successful and we've, we've done that rather well this year. Uh, what does this mean to the Bridgeville Borough? Um, it means that we're estimating the 18 uh, revenues to come in at about 3.2 and the expenditures to come in about 3.2, around $33,000. Uh -oh. $33,000 is a deficiency is what is anticipated. Again, due to the decrease of our budget, the borough really, really needs to uh, build back those uh, reserves uh, due to the un unanticipated flooding expenses. Uh, and as of January 19, our, our general fund balance is around $910,000. Now that's to carry us until July when we receive taxes again. So that, that counts for salaries, it counts for all the different expenses, which uh, Lori, in, your, in our meetings, you said this is probably the lowest that it's ever been. It is. It's been the lowest since I've been manager. So, so with that, oh, come on. Yeah. elevator music is I'll sing. No. <laughs> we got the water come back. <laughs> yeah. Sound just like a husband judge.
I gotta hurry up. All right, so what does that mean for the borough? Uh, we are not going to be increasing taxes this year. Um, none of the mills on the building mills uh, will not increase of the land. Um, so in an estimated revenue aspect, we're anticipating 3.3,169,000 and expenditures of 2.8. Uh, this isn't working, I'm, I apologize. Uh, we're going to be building the reserves to about 300,000 back to uh, what we had last year. Um, so we're, all in a nutshell, we're trying to uh, make sure that, that we are prepared for any time in the future that this may happen again, that we'll be able to build our reserves and, and finalize things. Uh, one last thing we've uh, been told by uh, Anne Marie. Well, this isn't good. My apologies. We had this all tested yesterday, and now, of course, it's not working. So, um, but just in a nutshell, we're not raising taxes. We're planning on building our reserves uh, with the hopes to be able to build up and have uh, the opportunity to uh, to get where we were last year to and continue to uh, uh, build all the services and help uh, the borough continue on uh, improving, improving bridge. Thank you, Joe. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know why it didn't work. At least we got some of the local Yeah. But, but we, will, we will put this uh, on a PDF and make it available on the Bridgeville website for anyone that would uh, like to review it. Uh, the presentation will be up there um, to be able to, to go through it if you want. Thank you. Thanks, Jeff. All right, with that said, uh, motion to borough council regarding resolution number 2018-12, a resolution approving the budget for the fiscal year 2019, and it's the same. The budget workshop public meeting was held on November 20, 2018, with the budget proposed budget available for public inspection meeting on November 26, 2018. The meeting the 10 day public inspection requirement per borough code. I'll move. First, thing, Joe. Second, Joe. Second, And Bruce Gallarducci. All those in favor? Aye. All right. All those opposed? Perfect. Motion carries. Yeah. All right. Ahead. Media reports. Administration. I don't have any report on anything. I'd like to thank our offices and that for this the job they've done this year. Uh, looking forward to next year. Very long, so just thank you, thank the police department and the, and the fire department for what they've done for us. Sure. That's all I have. All right. Uh, finance, Joe. I've said enough. You said enough. <laughs> Uh, Parks and Rec. Uh, no report, but the deadline for the next news vendor will be January 16th, which is next council meeting. Uh, that's all. All right, Public Works. Well, nothing in the normal stuff, I Mr. Mean, Chairman. The only thing you noted know, one line here where we removed the snow, but uh, that's one time. Let's hope uh, it'll be the rest of the year or many months. We don't know that. We have plenty of salt. Uh, it's sad to see the military vendor go away, but they look so nice, but we have to take them on sometime in the winter time. It's a, it's a very good honor to those people, and we certainly appreciate it that we implemented that, and with a lot of help and so forth. Uh, it's a good thing to do. Other than that, there's just been a regular maintenance uh, cars and uh, trucks and and street and so forth. Nothing major, thank God. Gotcha. Thank you. Uh, public safety bill. It's working on a couple of parking issues with uh, chief in town. And, uh, working through those. It's that's uh, about all I've got for today. Awesome. Uh, Madam Mayor. I want to thank the Public Works Department for what they do all year, particularly. For Christmas, the lighting is tremendous. 
And also want to thank the BCA, the fire department, and the borough for the winter blast event, which was well attended and enjoyed <coughs> by all. On December 14th, I've been asked to speak at Chartres Valley High School as part of six women speaking for future women of Pittsburgh, sponsored by Chuck Bar Barber, who's a teacher there at the high school. Thank you all for a very successful year. I'm grateful that businesses have been able to be reopened and that we have been united together. Thank you. Uh, just to add some, Ms. Uh, Madam Mayor, uh, that uh, lady happened to be my uh, neighbor, uh, particularly, and she, she's supposed to be here tonight and tell that successful of the ladies that's coming on in, 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 the, in the world, especially in the United States, she has some uh, paper to show us, and amazing, it's, it's a big organization. They meet in, uh, in, a, in a very high-class hotel in town, and uh, they pay uh, the promoter and everything. But the, the concept was that the, the women today, they are on top of uh, good jobs, and uh, as you see, you know, in a political field, center, and celebrity. So that's congratulations, all of you women. Amen. Amen. All you women. All you ladies. All of us. I think it's wonderful. Uh, Police Chief. Thank you, Council President. Um, on November 15th at 3.45 in the morning, we had our first fatal car crash since 1996 in the borough. It was on Bower Hill Road between Railroad Street and McLaughlin Run Road. It was one vehicle, one person, and unfortunately it was a fatal. Um, we had the winter blast last week, which we attended. We passed out toys that were donated to us from Jazzwares Company, uh, an individual that's a uh, big wig in their company. is from the Bridgeville area originally. And uh, he reached out to me it was shortly after the floods uh, through Facebook and mentioned that uh, he worked for a toy company and would be able to provide toys at any time if needed. So we took advantage of that for the winter blast. Uh, we also have some generous toy donations coming from Global Glorious Productions and Toys for Tykes. And we will be handing those out to kids. We're going to do the annual Buddy the Elf adventure again this year. It will be on Sunday, December 23rd. Not set on a time yet, probably 11 o'clock in the morning, and we're going to work with the fire department on it because after that, that's when uh, Santa and Mrs. Claus will be going through town also. So we have a couple of nice donations of toys coming up in the next few weeks. We should be able to provide toys to any child that shows up, and we'll start promoting that later this week through the Facebook page. All right. Thanks. Uh, Solicitor, Tom? Uh, thank you. My written report, I guess, uh, anything I'd add to that is what he says regarding the women's. Ladies. <laughs> the boys better watch it because they're, they're thinking over a wall. I'm looking forward to it. I just want to tell you how appreciative I am to the President's honor of serving you again. And I do want to tell you, um, again, express my appreciation, uh, in particular for the uh, heartwarming uh, uh, people who want citizen well wishing that I received on a recent passing my father. And I came back home with my family. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Engineer Sykes. Thank you. If you have any questions, I'll let it stand as it is. And again, thank you for letting me be your engineer for 2018. I'm looking forward to the future, and everyone have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Uh, Fire Chief Phil. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, as the Chief said, yes, on the 23rd, Santa and Mrs. Claus will be coming around town. We'll be starting around 1 o'clock, so look for us throughout the town that day, that afternoon. Be handing out our usual lollipops and dog treats. So if you have your animals, bring them up. What you guys are doing that yesterday? I thought I heard you. That wasn't at the uh, other communities. Uh, have already started. We always go closest to Christmas. That's right. Oh. <clears throat> so we'll be doing that. Um, thanks for the support with our mega ticket too. It's doing very well. So we're getting more and more every year. But uh, the only thing is, just like. Uh, 
Councilman Verducci had up here. This was a very, very busy year for us in the fire service here in Bridgeville. My goal is by January to have a really detailed report for you of what we did in 2018 as far as calls. Our average, just to let everybody know, we usually average about 225 to 250 a year in calls. And as of to date, we're over 500. We're actually probably pushing six. If you take out just the flood. The flood. If you take that out, you're still ahead. I mean, you're still worse. We're, we're still way above. Yeah. This year, if we take out the flood one, I'm going to say we're well over 300, pushing 400 this year. Wow. It's just been a very, very busy year for us. Uh, one of the things that's boosted us up, but it's been a very good support for the EMS is the QRS calls. Uh, we have a lot more of them, and you'll see the breakdown next month on that. But it's been a huge success too for the residents and people in Bridgeville. And again, have safe Christmas, New Year's, and Merry Christmas from everybody from the fire department. Happy New Year. Thank you. We don't want to see nothing personal. <laughs> uh, historical society, Mary? Me? Yeah, you. You're on. Uh, again, very short. Tomorrow night at 7 o'clock at the old railroad station, the previous library, Dr. Oiler will be speaking about, I think it's the years 1955 and 56 at Birchville High School. Um, then I'll know on Wednesday, this is how it organized he is, Wednesday morning on the email will be what's going to be in January. So he's really quite a very good historian, but he is a doctor also, an engineer, and I'm waiting for what they had to say about what we're going to do with our building ideas. Um, also, the Friday before Christmas, which I think is the 21st, uh, any time between 10 and 2, please stop in. It's going to be open, it will always open anyway, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. But come in, we have a mini museum you can look at. We've got five vertical file folders full of information about the Birchville area, not just Birchville area. But please, feel free, if you come at 2 o'clock, fine, because I'll probably be there until 4 or 5. I have to run the sweeper after that. <laughs> um, and the next thing important is that we did get two tickets to a Penguin game at the end of March, or near the end of March. Uh, they're in our possession, and we will be starting raffle tickets probably mid-January. And for the moment, except for saying, have a very Merry Christmas, have a Happy New Year, and thank you for all that you do, all of you, for Birchville. Thank you. Thanks, Mary. Uh, the Bridgeville Library. Um, it was so nice to see the library on the video budget report on the monitor. Thank you so much. Um, it was our prettiest building in town. It <laughs> <laughs> one of the biggest mortgages in town. <laughs> um, I'm here just to remind you that right now we currently have the Festival of Trees at the library. This is actually the 14th year for the Festival of Trees at, through the Bridgeville Public Library. I believe Carol Burnaby was one of the uh, brought the idea 14 years ago. I can't believe I remember being in a room and she brought this idea. It was something she was familiar with from her hometown. Um, it'll be available for your viewing till December 16th. Um, there is also some beautiful statuary from our mayor, I understand. Did you bring some of your collectible? My collection of angels. Your collection of angels. And it's very oh, cool. And my, my borough tree features all the women of the borough, fire department, and so forth and so on. Yes. Thank you so much, Betty, for all the special things that you've done for our community. And thank you all to the borough members as well for listening to us. Um, one of the things that you're going to be receiving, if you're in the, in the Bridgeville community, is a letter that was signed by me. And this is our um, annual campaign for the Bridgeville Public Library. So I'm hopeful that you can take some time to look over the brochure 
um, look at some of the ideas that we've kind of compiled of the things that are going on and that we do, and that you would consider donating to the Bridgeville Public Library. And thanks to everyone for this year of 2018. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, you know, you have anything for planning? No, I think we know. All right. Uh, oh, here's the way you're parking. Um, I provided my written report. The only thing that I do want to touch on is, um, as you know, <coughs> as of January 1st, we're starting with a new hauler, uh, garbage hauler company, Westmoreland Landfill LLC. Do you the dates when you're in the dates? We have provided them with uh, the addresses and names of all our customers, and they will be sending out individual letters to all of our customers, letting them know. Um, you know, when they'll be picking up and just giving them general information about the company. Um, so I, I expect that to be happening within the next week or two. And, and um, we'll put it on Facebook, we'll put it on the website, um, just so that everyone, you know, when there's a change, it gets a little bit confusing and it probably will take them a little while to uh, learn the runs. Hey, in interesting, I saw in the paper tonight, and waste management will no longer be collecting glass as part of the recyclable. Really? And, and so many communities around here. So our decision to not go that route you know, is not that big of an impact for us. Mm -hmm. Saving money to, to yes. not collecting glass. Apparently it has something, it has something to do with the cost of the, the recycling itself. <coughs> really, we don't keep recycled materials in this country. We ship them overseas. To, to be recycled, and the cost of the, the, for something contaminated is a heavy fee to the uh, hauler, the collector. Yeah. It's a shame. Yeah, it is. Sorry, right, just segregate it. Sorry about that. That's good. That's good to know. Other than that, if you have any questions on our report, so we'll keep you updated and try to make sure that we put everything out on Facebook and the website so that residents are aware. Great. Thank you very much. And Merry Christmas. Happy New Year, it's been a pleasure working with everyone this year. Old business. <coughs> old business? New business? Uh, before I, I want to thank everybody, especially uh, in June, the flight, all you guys, um, fire park, Lord, I know you were, well, I was worried about you in the summer. Yeah. Um, so you and your team. Chief, all your guys, um, great job this summer. It was an unusual year for us. Public works, everything. Um, happy, Merry Christmas, everybody. Okay. 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 All in favor? Aye. Or opposed? See you next year.